Hey everybody, I'm Sean. And I'm Kieran. Welcome to a special episode of Angling Spiders. Hey guys, welcome back. And in today's episode, we will be touring the Len Thompson Lure Factory. This was all Len Thompson's from his first store in Abernathy, Saskatchewan. It was an ammo and tackle shop. All right, so everything you see on the wall is available to retailers. It's what we produce. Um, the only thing that's not is our special color that's coming out next spring. And this is the Fire Five of Diamonds right here. So brilliant color and I have to say I'm, I have tested it and it is tested very, very well. Cool. Now in these display cabinets we've got a whole bunch of different things. You can see early paint patterns here. Um, obviously uh, they're very kind of uh, rough and fuzzy looking and that's because they didn't have the technology to be able to do the lures awesome. that we do now. Our first packaging was basically a little piece of cardboard. Then we went to the all popular fishing hints cardboard, um, then to all plastic, and now we got kind of a hybrid of both where we have the cardboard and plastic. The star of this is right here. Yeah. 1929 bean can and solder that Len Thompson made by hand. Um, formed it himself, and that was the basis of the lures. Now, we don't think it's the original, the first one that he built. We're thinking maybe more around the third or the fourth, because we figured the first couple might have been lost. Um, but that's basically the mold he followed, and that's how we got to where we were. Um, these guys, every single little box you see on the shelf has six package lures in it. So obviously six times six, and if you come down this way, we've got all of these shelves, plus we've got six rows of hooks. So we've got a, a few lures to uh, <laughs> supply people with for their fishing habits. So that's yeah, a lot, this eh? This is our big yeah. shelving here. And this is how we fill everything for the lures all across Canada and, to be honest, all over the world. So Where do you get the beer? The beer is at Blind Man Brewing, actually just down the road here. Really? Um, yeah, they actually came out with that this year in honor, kind of with our 90th anniversary. We were doing that large giant hook, right? Yeah. Um, so they came out with the beer. An interesting thing with this is um, their first run, they made a big batch and it was supposed to last six to eight months. It lasted under four weeks, I believe they were telling us. So they made a second batch for six to eight months again under four weeks. It's been selling so well. We're very happy to be associated with them and uh, they're doing very well with the beer. So if you guys like beer and you liked Five of Diamonds and you like Len Thompson, there you go. So this is something not a lot of people know about Len Thompson and that's the fact that we are also two North smokers. Now we used to make the smokers here for quite a number of years. We bought the company back in 94 from a place in Edmonton. Uh, we did it all by hand. All the metal and stuff was basically shaped and put together here. But in 2016, it got to the point where we actually had to discontinue that um, just because of the fact that smokers were being made overseas for pennies yeah. on the dollar. Yeah. So we stopped with the smokers, but that said, our line of wood chips and bits is still going very strong. Um, the nice thing is the bits are perfect for a smoker. They're nice and yeah. small, get the nice smoke going. But if you don't want to spend the money on a smoker and you still want to infuse your food with that flavor, you buy the chips, which are a little bit chunkier. You take two handfuls, put it in tin foil, Basically wrap it up, poke holes in the top with a fork, put it on your grill, and as soon as you see smoke coming up, put your meat on there or whatever you're going to cook, and it'll actually infuse it with that flavor. We actually have six different flavors. We have apple, alder, cherry, mesquite, maple, and hickory, all available, and they come in the two-pound bags. Um, you can get them at PV Mark, Co-op, True Values, uh, Fish and Hole, and here in uh, the factory or online on our online store. Uh, we've got the... Sweet pepper, the original, the hot barbecue, and the original smoked fish in those, as well as we have the fish crisp down there. Now that's a little known thing is we have the two north fish crisp. But right here you can see these nice big rolls of brass. This is how the majority of Len Thompson lures start their lives. Um, each one of these coils of brass can weigh up to and around 300 pounds, give or take 20 pounds. So it's not unlike to have uh, 5,000 pounds on one of these skids wow. easily. Um, anything that's got the hammer texture to it, so like the perch pattern or the brass and flame actually comes like that. Okay. We don't do that ourselves. So we order the brass with that pattern on it and we just cut out the lures from there. Okay. So each one of these coils, basically, we can get anywhere from three to 6,000 hooks out of a single coil. Okay. Um, so next up, we're going to show you the Northern King lures. They come to us in a little bit of a different fashion. What we get with the Northern Kings is we actually get sent our blanks like this. So they're already cut out. The holes are in the top and the bottom. The NK name is on there as well as the size of the hook. Now we take these guys one at a time into this machine, hit these buttons here, and what comes out is this nice hook with the beautiful curve and that gives us that nice wiggle that the fish yeah. love on the water, right? 
So the lacquer process, there's a few different reasons why we use it. Now obviously brass doesn't rust, but when exposed to air or water it can tarnish. It can turn black, sometimes a little bit green. Um, so what we like to have is that back side of the lure nice and flashy and shiny because that's what kind of helps attract the fish. So we'll put the lacquer on all of these hooks to protect that nice shininess. So okay. what'll happen is you have the whole hanger full of hooks, you come in here, this is your basically your lacquer tray, you soak it in there, you hook them up on here and basically they'll start to drip dry. And as they're dripping dry, we've got the little tape brushes here, we'll come along and at the bottom of each hook, we'll get every little drip so that it doesn't dry like that. Now you're seeing there's a lot of work done by yeah. hand here, right? Yeah. Every single lure that comes through the factory gets touched at least 20 if not 30 times before it gets put into a package. Each time it's touched, uh, everybody checks to make sure all the letters are in the Len Thompson, that the size is readable, the holes are punched in the right places, and there's no scratches or gouges. So this is basically a setup for painting. Now as you can see here, we've got the lures all around here. Um, 13 is the size of the lure, so these are the number 13s. And the CC is the pattern that they're going to be painting, and CC is the, the candy, candy cane. And basically that's that nice green with the pink and the white. Um, as you can see, we've got a bunch of different paints, and I wish I could tell you we just open up a can and start spraying. That's not the case. Every one of our paints is basically hand mixed here with certain ingredients to make sure that the paint has that longevity. And then you can see the mask on the wall, and you can probably already tell some of the Len Thompson patterns right off the bat, right? So the voyage of the hooks, so they'll basically come in here. So yeah, white, yellow, red, those are probably the most common colors you can see us painting here. Um, and the base coats, and it depends on what color it is, it can be as little as two or as much as five coats of paint. So you can see we've got some brass and flame being uh, put there right now. Um, it's got a little white base coat and then they come over top of it with that bright flame and that's what gives us that nice bright orange. Um, we've also got some lemon and some flame up there, so five of diamonds with the ultra bright colors. Um, same kind of thing, they basically use the mask, put it on top and spray it. Now another nice thing is obviously we've got some great painters that work here. Um, they do a phenomenal job. Um, but yeah, that's how we get that color on. So every single lure that comes to our factory is painted this way. No machinery cool. at all. That's awesome. Now what'll happen is basically the trays with the painted lures will go into the oven with the full rack like this. And depending on the paint, uh, really depends on how long the, the lures go in for. All right, so this is how we basically get all the rings and the hooks onto the lures. All done by hand. You're gonna notice they use little rubber stoppers on their fingers just to give them that grip because that steel gets very, very slippery. Here's an example of something that basically does not pass the bill. Now, if you're gonna notice, there's not a lot of solder on here. And if I turn it sideways, you can see there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a lip there. Yep. Your line gets caught on that, you lost your hook, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we aim to have about 2,500 hooks assembled each and every day. And we go into packaging next. Now, you can see here from the packaging, Basically, we just have these little plywood forms. They got either a rubber or a cork border. The plastic blisters go in there. The hooks will come face down in here. And then the cardboard's on the back side. They'll spin it around to this machine here, underneath here, where this will come down for about eight seconds at 300 and some degrees. And then that does the heat seal for it. Now, once it gets all sealed, it gets turned around to the other one. The next batch is ready to go. Uh, the ones that come out, they check and make sure that the hooks aren't poking through the plastic. Plastic's totally sealed. Cardboard's in good condition. All those criteria are met. It's taken to this table right here, and we actually box them into those little boxes you've seen on the shelves earlier. So right here, this is the reason why I love this machine so much. Wow, look at that. So we can actually put pictures onto the lures, as long as the resolution of the picture is fairly good. Uh, we did these guys up for the Parliament in Canada, so this is being sold at the gift shop in Ottawa. Um, they asked us for that. This was one of uh, an auction for Gila Fleur, Mario Lemieux, kind of a retro feel to it. We can also do little steel spoons. Now the steel spoons, they're not a, a Len Thompson brand. They're more of an economical brand, but when they're painted up, they look pretty good as well. Yeah, um, so that's part of the stuff we can do. Another thing, memoriam lures and wedding lures are very popular. So the fingerprint and the signature of the person. So that's a great memory as well as our officially hooked as our <laughs> wedding lures. So people love doing that. Now, if we were to go for basically, you know, a uh, basic something like that, for a 12 lot, you're looking at anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks, depending on what kind of extras and stuff you put on. Obviously, anything on top of that is more, um, but it runs about that, and sizing also makes a difference, right? 
Um, so a couple other things, obviously this year is our 90th anniversary, we we're very pleased to be celebrating it. We did that giant lure that I'm sure you guys will spend some time at, yep. right? Um, we also did this right here, which is a limited edition five pack of five of diamonds. Um, obviously that's the 90th edition special one. This one's got 90 little diamonds to make up the five of diamonds. And then our newest color, the fire of five of diamonds, which comes out in spring. Now this nice board that you see here, this was one of the displays that they took around to all the fishing shows. Um, obviously all hand painted, hand carved, hand crafted. Um, a little bit different than what you see nowadays with the fabrics that get pulled up in seconds, right? This yeah. had to be lugged around all the time. The hooks had to be changed every year and whatnot. So right here we have number three and number four, which are the prequels to that giant lure that's out there. Now what happened was they went through a few different modifications to see how to get it to work. Um, but these two especially were the ones that proved the, the hydroform uh, process. And basically all that is, is they took these hooks, they cut out the shapes, they welded a solid piece of steel on the background until it was nice and airtight. Then they basically cut a hole right here and they put a little tap attachment so that they could hook a garden hose to a tap and just fill it with water from the tap. So no special pressure, just the tap. And what happened was once the water started going in there, it started to push out the hook and it made that beautiful little curve that we like there. Um, once they got number three and four done, they were like, well, let's try it on the big one and they got on the first goal in the big one. Wow. Now the big one took about eight months for them to start to finish. Um, took 25 gallons of paint. Um, and then the spoon itself is about 2,500 pounds and the hook is about 900 pounds. Hey everyone, we just finished a tour of the Len Thompson Lure Factory. Now we are out at the Len Thompson Trout Pond here in Lacombe, home of the world's largest fishing lure, the Len Thompson number 90. Let's go have a look. So there it is. What do you think? Pretty cool. Think you can pull that behind your kayak? <laughs> think your arms are strong enough? Oh yeah. <laughs> that is the world's largest fishing lure in the famous Len Thompson, uh, yellow and red five of diamonds. Pretty impressive. So before we close out today's episode, I just want to thank everybody at the Len Thompson factory for taking us through. Special shout out to Jessica and Ryan uh, for helping us out with our custom lures. That was fantastic. And also a special shout out to Ryan for taking us through the factory and showing us how Len Thompson lures are made. Yeah, thanks for the great tour. All right. Uh, also want to thank Ryan because he did a little something extra for us and created some uh, angling spider stickers for our kayaks, uh, which is fantastic. So Kieran's got those there. And uh, also I will show you what they look like because we have put them on our kayaks. So fantastic. So just thanks again to everybody at Len Thompson. It was an awesome day and look forward to using your lures on the water in the future. Just quickly, we wanted to show off the stickers on our kayaks, as we mentioned, and so here we are. We got our brand new Angling Spider stickers on the ends of our kayak. These will be visible when we're shooting our episodes, so they're well placed. Thanks very much again, Ryan, for those. We also scored a couple of Len Thompson stickers, so we were more than happy to put those on our kayaks. A Little bit of branding there. Um, just to be clear, everybody, we are not sponsored by Len Thompson, um, but we are more than happy, Ryan, to accept anything you want to send our way in the future. So thanks again for everything and hope you guys enjoyed the episode.